In the last video, we looked at the definition of a causal function. That is a function which is zero for negative values of t. We also looked at the definition of the Laplace transform of the function f of t. We multiply f of t by e to the power of minus st and integrate this product from zero to infinity with respect to t. So this here is a function of s. So we often write it as big F of s. In a previous video, we got the Laplace transform of the function t times u of t. u of t is just the unit step function. u of t is 1 for values of t that are greater than or equal to 0, and 0 for values of t less than 0. So if we multiply 1 by t, we just get t. If we multiply 0 by t, we get 0. So this function here is the graph of t cut off for negative values of t. So if we were looking at the graph of f of t equals t, this line would continue on. It would continue on like this, but we're multiplying this by zero, so we don't have that. Um, we can write our function as t times u of t instead of t because we're integrating from zero to infinity. So we're not interested in the value of the function for negative values of t anyway. So in the previous video we went through this calculation. It involved integration by parts. We saw that if s is real and positive then the transform of t u t is 1 over s squared. Here we have the function t to the power of n times ut. Its Laplace transform is n factorial over s to the power of n plus 1. Let's get this transform. Well, we apply the definition of the Laplace transform. We have to multiply the function by e to the power of minus st and integrate from 0 to infinity with respect to time. Here is the formula for integration by parts. So, we have to decide which of these functions is u and which is v. So we need to integrate u times dv. That's what this thing has the form of. And I explained in the previous video that we used the rule liate in integration by parts. So the algebraic term is t to the power of n. The exponential term is e to the minus st. And since a comes before e in this rule, we let u equal t to the power of n. We can forget about u of t actually. u of t is just equal to 1 for t greater than 0. And we're integrating from t equals 0 to infinity. So that's just 1 in this situation for this integral. So if we let u equal t to the power of n, we have to get its derivative because we need du in our answer. So we differentiate this with respect to time and we multiply both sides by dt. Since u equals t to the power of n, dv must be the rest of this integral. It must be e to the minus st times dt. And we need to get v from that, so we need to integrate this with respect to time. And as we saw before, when we integrate e to the power of a constant times t, we get 1 over the constant times e to the power minus st. So the constant is minus s in this situation, since we're integrating with respect to time. So we plug in here, we have u times v, we have to evaluate this product um, for the limits 0 to infinity. Then we have minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v, which is this here, times du, which is this here. Now to evaluate this for the upper limit, we have to take the limit of this quantity as t tends towards infinity. Now, since s is positive, I explained before that e to the power of minus st will go to 0. And it'll actually go to 0 faster than t to the power of n will go to infinity as t tends towards infinity. So basically this product will go to 0. So we saw that in a previous video for the case where n is equal to 1. But it's also true for values of n greater than 1. So you can prove that this product actually goes to 0. So we end up getting 0 minus, and then we plug in the lower limit, which is 0. Well, that's just going to give us 0. So we get 0 minus 0, which is 0. 
So we can take out the plus or the minus 1 over s from inside this integral because we're integrating with respect to t. We can also take out n, which is actually a natural number, a positive integer. And uh, we end up having to get this integral here. But if you look at this, this is actually the definition of the Laplace transform of t to the power of n minus 1. Now we have this recursion relation here. Let's look at L of t n minus 1. Well, we just look at this relation and replace n with n minus 1. So here we're going to get n minus 1 over s. We replace this n with n minus 1. And we're going to get the transform of t to the power of n minus 1 minus 1, which is n minus 2. So we see that L of t n minus 1 is n minus 1 over s times L of t n minus 2. So that's what we have here. And of course we have to multiply by n over s. To get L of t n minus 2, we go back up here and replace n with n minus 2. So we get n minus 2 over s times L of t to the power of n minus 2 minus 1, which is L of t n to the power of n minus 3. So we can see a pattern emerging here. Anyway, we keep going with this. Until we get to L of t, which was calculated earlier. N is a positive integer, a natural number, so this will happen. We will end up getting t to the power of 1. How many s's will we have? Well, when the power is n minus 2, we have two s's. When the power is n minus 3, we have three s's. When the power is 1, we can write 1 as n minus bracket n minus 1. So the n's will cancel and we're left with 1. So it means that we have n minus 1 s's. Now, what do we have in the numerator? Well, when we have three s's in the numerator, s cubed, we can see that this number here is 3 minus 1. So here we have n minus 1 s's in the denominator. So in here we have uh, n minus 1, so we have to subtract 1 from it. Like up here, we have s cubed in the denominator, we subtract 1 to get 2. So we subtract 1 from n minus 1, so we get n minus 1 minus 1. So we have to take n and subtract the power of s minus 1. If we break this down, simplify this, n minus n gives us 0, we get uh, minus minus 2 is plus 2. So here we start with n and we multiply all the way back to plus 2. Well, this is just the definition of n factorial. We saw earlier that L of t is 1 over s squared. So we have s to the power of n minus 1 by s squared. That's s to the power of n minus 1 plus 2, or s to the power of n plus 1. So we get for the Laplace transform of t to the power of n, n factorial over s to the power of n plus 1.